VPN overview. So now we talk about VPN overview. So what is VPN? So VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. It's a, net, it's a private data channel established across a shared public network. It connects all the networks or endpoint devices that needs to access the virtual network to form a dedicated network that provides a certain degree of security and quality of services. Wow, <laughs> this is a long um, definition of <laughs> VPN. Um, so, so, so VPN is actually uh, very simple, all right? So let's say this is the uh, internet uh, infrastructure. Yeah, this is internet, right? So um, how do we form uh, a secure channel over uh, the uh, internet to access to our corporate, right? This is a this is the company, right? Now, of course, if you do not know about VPN, uh, let's talk about a private list line. Okay, so I know, yeah, in uh, maybe 15 years ago, or maybe 20 years ago, all right. So if if branches uh, wants to connect to another branch uh, of a, of the company, then you probably need to have a, a dedicated uh, line, you know that's connected from one location to another location, which is very, very costly, okay? So uh, today, because the internet is so easily um, uh, connected to, right, you basically can go anywhere around the world and um, everywhere around the world, they have internet. So you can actually use the, that infrastructure and create your own tunnel, to form a tunnel to access uh, privately, securely, and to access the company uh, infrastructure. Okay, so this is called virtual private network. Um, so virtual, virtual means uh, user uses the toll lines of the internet to set up their own private network without requiring physical dedicated toll lines. Okay, or we call it the uh, private lease line. Uh, private network user can customize a network best suit to their needs. All right, so let's look at the category of uh, VPN. Um, so at the at the data link layer, or we call it the layer two, right? So we have uh, uh, the protocol PPTP, uh, L2F, and also the L2TP. So this is at the uh, the layer two VPN, um, and we also have a layer three VPN, which is a network layer. Um, we have a GRE and also the uh, uh, IPsec technologies. And also at the transport layer, this is the layer four, uh, we have the uh, SSL VPN, okay? So these are the uh, uh, different technologies. Um, now in, in this slides, we are not gonna discuss uh, PPTP and also the L2F because uh, these two are actually a very uh, legacy uh, protocol and they are less secure and most of most of the uh, 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 operating system nowadays um, started to uh, uh, remove this uh, feature from uh, from your system, right? Um, so PPTP, uh, L2, L2F, layer two forwarding, point-to-point -point tunneling protocol are not being discussed. Uh, so we will talk about the L2TP, layer two uh, tunneling protocol, and then the uh, GRE, IP security, and also the SSL. All right, so let's look at the uh, the different scenario types. So when we talk about the uh, the different uh, VPN scenario, we have site to site the VPN scenario. We also have the client to site VPN. Now site to site VPN basically means this is the uh, the protocol or the technology which is designed to uh, to branch to connect two or more branches, for example. Okay. Uh, this is called site to site. So, example, we could have probably the third branch, okay, over the uh, uh, the internet, okay. Um, so this is the mainly is to is to uh, connect between two lands, uh, applicable technologies such as IPsec, L2TP, L2TP over IPsec, GRE over IP over IPsec, and IPsec over GRE, okay. Uh, client to site VPN uh, example, yeah, I we just mentioned earlier, we spoke about earlier, 
uh, the client is actually outside or could be overseas and it tries to connect back to the offices okay using the uh, uh, the following technologies SSL IPsec L2TP L2TP over uh, IPsec okay so let's first discuss about uh, L2TP uh, L2TP VPN um, L2TP stands for um, layer 2 tunneling protocol this is actually a tunneling protocol set to transparently transmit PPP packets between user and the enterprise server. It provides support for the tunnel transmission of the packet at the PPP link layer. All right, now you'll be surprised. <laughs> this keyword uh, PPP, all right, so PPP is actually a point to point protocol. So for the L2TP, formation of the L2TP, uh, it actually involved PPP as well. Yes, correct. The PPP that we usually use to connect uh, to internet, yeah, that one, PPP. Um, L2TP VPN applies to foreign scenario. Uh, we have the uh, NAS initiated uh, VPN. Uh, we also have an automatic dialing on the LAC and also client initiated VPN. Uh, so NAS initiated VPN basically means uh, example like the uh, uh, the uh, the the branch scenario, site to site scenario. Okay, if if anything that uh, wants to send the traffic over to this side of the network, then the the NAS, uh, this is the network uh, access device here, they will actually um, connect from the VPN automatically. A uh, client initiated VPN are the one that typically we installed on, on our laptop. Uh, when we go abroad, then we need to double click and to initiate. And we also support the automatic dialing on the lag. Okay. Um, now lag is actually uh, the, uh, it stands for uh, L2TP access concentrator. Okay. So this is actually a, a, a very uh, old term uh, used in um, in the dial-up uh, uh, era, okay. All right, so um, so let's look at the uh, the client-initiated L2 VPN. Okay, this is the one that we use the most. Okay. All right, generally this type of L2 TP VPN is used when employees needs to access the server at the HQ, HQ using devices such as PC, uh, mobile phones. Okay, or maybe uh, laptops, or iPad, you know, when they are on a uh, business trip, or maybe they are on out of the office, or maybe at home even. This is the most commonly used L2TP uh, dial up mode. Okay, now why is it called dial up mode? Because we, 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 uh, we, we are still required to, to double click, you know, to, to initiate that. Say, I want to connect to, uh, to the VPN. Okay, otherwise, uh, L2TP will not uh, automatically connect for you okay unlike the site to site VPN um, so the, here's the um, uh, the uh, the example okay so we, on, on the left hand side we have the uh, user yeah we have the user and um, so so the user actually um, wanted to send some data okay so this is the data and uh, after that, the data would then be encaps encapsulated with the PPP header. And after that, on top of that, it will be encapsulated with L2TP encapsulation header. So there are two headers <laughs> will be encapsulated. Now, when this traffic is then sent over uh, internet to this uh, uh, LNS, all right. So um, all right. So when you send it over to this uh, H, yeah, this is the the H point, okay, LNS. Um, so LNS stands for L2TP Network Server. L2TP Network Server. This is a acronym of a acronym. Um, so so that the uh, now when, when we capture the uh, the packet in between, let's say we perform a Wireshark in between, uh, here we will find the public IP address header, which uh, the source public IP, to the destination public IP, right? UDP header. Uh, which is uh, using port number 1701 uh, port 1701 this is the default uh, port number and, and then we also have the L2TB header so we will discuss this in the next slide 
uh, how do they negotiate for the LTB session header uh, and on top of here we have PPP header then we only we have the uh, private IP address private IP basically means uh, if you want you, uh, when 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 you connected to the uh, uh, when you form a tunnel right so here the user will be given a private IP right so you will be given a private IP and then the on the on the on this side here when you send something right so it will carry your source private IP to the destination private IP which is your corporate the, the company server private uh, server okay using the private IP addresses all right so um, so once the packet arrived the LNS the H and uh, the two header will then be removed decapsulate so this part will be removed and after that when it comes to this side here to here uh, we can see the uh, the data the private addresses and the Ethernet header okay so this is actually what uh, will be uh, is expected to see all right so let's look at the actual process okay so when this this is the process uh, from the uh, from the moment the user uh, started the uh, the session the connection uh, the dial up connection uh, until the uh, the user access the resources okay all right so so first of all um, so first of all the um, when the uh, user create dial up yeah when you press the dial up um, it will actually start the uh, uh, the first packet over there is called the uh, uh, SCCRQ, okay. So this is actually a request, a session, a session request, okay. This is a, a session request. Uh, we call it start control connection request. Start control connection request. So just remember the RQ here stands for request, and and uh, and also look at the uh, the direction, okay. This is from the user. That connects to LNS, okay. And again, LAC stands for L2TP Access Concentrator. So this is actually the uh, you can call it the the client side, and then it will send a chap challenge, and after that the LNS will come back with the chap response, okay. Um, so this RP here stands for um, the uh, reply, okay. Start control connection reply, okay. So after that, the uh, once the verification success, then after that you will send the uh, success message, and then the uh, the CN here is the uh, connection, all right? Um, so you will send the response and then verify verification access. So based on this few handshake, they actually uh, establish the uh, L2TP tunnel. This is just basically tunnel, okay? So you can see uh, from all this uh, handshake, uh, there is no username password involved and neither the uh, IP address uh, is involved yet okay and after that um, the, uh, the the stage 2 this is stage 1 okay stage 2 um, uh, the uh, LAC will then send what we call the incoming uh, connection uh, request okay incoming connection request so this is the uh, sent to LNC and then LNC will come back with the reply okay so this is the time where they will uh, they will they will form they will negotiate for the PPP parameters. Okay, as we learned in the uh, HCNA routing and switching, uh, PPP negotiation parameters involve the authentication type, the magic number, and also the MTU size. Okay, sorry, the MRU size, uh, maximum receive unit size. So these are the uh, negotiation parameters. And after that, they will go through the uh, authentication process. So let's assume uh, they use the chap to perform authentication. And um, after this is uh, secure, then the next is okay. The the okay. So, so here you can see that the LNS authenticate the user. Okay. Uh, so once the PPP process uh, authentication has accomplished, then the next process is actually they will negotiate for the IP. Uh, for the IP address, so we call this uh, sending the IPCP control packet, right? Um, so after that, once the user have the IP address, the user can now access to the intranet resources. Okay, so this is the the process. 
All right, so that is uh, L2TP. So now we look at the next is called the uh, GRE, yeah, GRE VPN. This is the second uh, uh, technology that we could discuss. Um, GRE stands for General Routing Encapsulation. GRE, General Routing Encapsulation. It's a layer 3 VPN encapsulation technology. So GRE encapsulates the packets of a wide variety of network layer protocols such as uh, IPX, stands for Inter-Network Package Exchange, IP, Internet Protocol, Apple Talk, into IP tunneling packets so that this packet can be transmitted over heterogeneous networks. The channel of transmi transmitting the packet over heterogeneous uh, network is called tunnel. Okay, now let's look at this uh, scenario. Okay, so let's assume, <laughs> let's assume, we still have some companies that are, uh, are pretty much still using a very old legacy protocol such as IPX. And I think uh, some of you guys already know IPX was originally uh, developed by Novell and Apple Talk. And uh, you should you should know who's who developed Apple Talk, right? <laughs> um, right. So um, yeah. So if if let's say some of the companies they are they are still pretty much using uh, IPX, or maybe uh, let's don't don't talk about today. Okay, maybe in the past. Okay, because this technology was developed uh, during the um, uh, during the past, right? So say maybe some of the companies they 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 wanted to to to, to carry. The IPX uh, traffic from here to this side, but unfortunately, in uh, our IP, our internet is pretty much everything about IP. Okay, now GRE can actually come to the help. All right, so we can actually f f create a tunnel. Yeah, we can create a tunnel here, and to support IPX traffic over there, or maybe the Apple Talk. Yeah, Apple Talk uh, protocol. Okay, and you know you should know Apple Talk by who, right? <laughs> So this is a over heterogeneous network mixture of the network. All right, so let's look at the uh, GRE packet, uh, packet handling uh, process. Okay. Um, so first of all, we look at the uh, uh, some of the packet header. Um, on this side, we have the uh, private IP address of 192.168.1.1, the user, and uh, here we have a PCB user B 2.1 slash 24 so this is a, a definitely a layer 3 uh, value uh, that means uh, this is one subnet and two dot something is another subnet and uh, let's look at the uh, public IP address over here so this is 1.1.1.1 and we have another IP here on firewall B side the public IP address here is 2.2.2.2 so this is uh, the public IP address now we also have something called the tunnel IP address. Okay. Now, actually, the tunnel IP address um, is much needed because um, the, the, um, based on the command, if if you want to create the uh, uh, GRE tunnel, okay. Now, this is actually just a, a recap uh, the things that we learned in HCNA routing and switching class. Uh, so, actually, we did learn about this command called the interface tunneling. Uh, tun tunnel interface tunnel followed by a value for example tunnel 1 interface tunnel 1 and after that we define the uh, the protocol of uh, GRE okay and then we define source address source IP address and we also define the destination address so source in this case will be 10.1.1.1 and the destination 10.1.1.2 okay now, why do we need to have the uh, the the IP address here? Because uh, with the IP address, this the status of the the protocol. Okay, so when we do a display interface uh, IP interface brief command, uh, in uh, not, we are not only looking at the uh, the physical status. Okay, we are also looking at the uh, protocol status. It has to be up and uh, up. Okay, physical and uh, and the protocol has to be up. So this is the reason why we need the IP address here uh, in order to bring up the uh, interface, to completely bring up the interface, okay? All right, so that's the reason why we have uh, the pub, uh, the, uh, the tunnel IP. But if you look at the uh, the whole process here, uh, there's no public, uh, there's no tunnel IP that's involved in this scenario, okay? 
Um, okay, let's back to the uh, PCA. So let's say PCA carrier data, and he tried to send over. And uh, what happened is that the uh, routing table uh, will look at your destination. Okay, uh, this is the two zero destination, and the next hop is actually the tunnel interface. Okay, the next hop. Okay, so let's say in this case, uh, the tunnel is tunnel one. Yeah, and this is the IP address. So after that, so that means this firewall will then put this packet into this format. See that? Okay, and of course, uh, in, in the tunnel description, we have the uh, tunnel source and the tunnel uh, destination. Um, okay, sorry guys. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, this is uh, my mistake. Okay, the source is actually um, 1111, not 10, sorry. And the destination here is the 2222. Okay, and then there's an IP address value that we need to edit here, which is the 10 as the IP address. Okay. Um, so sorry about that. Uh, source destination is the public IP. Okay. Uh, the IP address command is actually about your own uh, in, uh, internal IP address. So the uh, so after that the uh, the firewall will then encapsulate with a GRE header and with the additional of the public uh, header, public address header, which is destination two 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 two. This these are the inside information, right? And then it will send over to the uh, based on the public IP address to this destination. Okay, so when this destination receive, it will perform the reverse process. Okay, so first of all, you look at this. This is a GRE tunnel. After that, they will decapsulate the header. Yeah, the two header two 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 two, and the GRE header. And once they decapsulate, they actually see the uh, IP, the private IP. After that, based on the routing table of this uh, firewall. Uh, 2.0 segment and they will forward to the next hop and eventually they reaches the PCB okay all right so how about the uh, security policy okay um, in our first few chapters uh, actually we we cover about the uh, security policy but let's do a, a recap over here okay um, so every time when we want to co uh, configure uh, any firewall um, by default uh, every traffic are uh, denied. You know, no matter where the traffic uh, from uh, public to private interface, from uh, segment A to segment B, whatever, all the traffic will be denied. Okay. Now, the 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 only way to allow the traffic is to first we need to understand zone. Okay. So by default, um, Huawei's firewall we created um, four zones. Uh, they are known as untrust trust zone and the DMZ zone okay uh, and the last zone is called local zone okay now local zone actually refers to the firewall itself itself the firewall itself is called local zone uh, DMZ is yeah is a zone where it carries a, a priority value of 50 local carrier priority value of 100 trust carrier value of 85 and trust will carry a priority value of number uh, of five. Now, the higher the value it goes, the 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 the, the more trustworthy it is. So, for example, local hundred, and trust, which means internet, five. Okay. Um, so this is step number one. We need to prepare the zone. And step two is to add the interface. Yeah. For example, we have uh, G one zero one. Or maybe I add another interface called G1 slash 0 slash 2 into the interface called trust. Okay. Or maybe in this case, <laughs> this, this guy is supposed to be 1 slash one, 1. Slash one. Okay. But I think uh, you get my point, right? First of all, you need to have a zone. And then after that, we add all the necessary uh, interface to into the zone. Okay. Example. And after that, we will define uh, the security policy. Okay. Yeah, this is where we we are now talking about security policy. So, for example, uh, when the packet is sent from a trust zone to the DMZ, yeah. So we we either will have two action policy is either to permit or to deny this traffic. 
So the policy goes by zone to zone, right? So we normally don't configure interface to interface policy. Why? Because uh, it's, it's very uh, configuration uh, intensive. Because today you might be uh, using interface G101 uh, as the public uh, untrust interface, internet interface, and tomorrow you might add another interface called 202 and then you have to reconfigure a different uh, another policy in order to support your <laughs> uh, your policy right so uh, if you're using zone it will be a lot easier so let's say tomorrow you want to add another service provider so all you need to do is to, to configure to add the interface into the zone and boom then straight away this interface will immediately inherit whatever security policy which already been defined at the security zone or maybe other zone okay and of course we can also create our own uh, zone for example you want to call sales zone you give a priority value of 60 uh, you can create another zone called the uh, um, uh, warehouse warehouse zone okay you can give a priority of uh, 55 or whatever okay so so this is very important uh, because when we talk about the uh, the GRE tunnel um, so we need to understand what zone that we should allow them to pass through okay now this is not as straightforward as like uh, when a PC wants to serve internet you just need to make sure that trust to untrust zone it is permitted now, now we are talking about tunneling <laughs> tunneling alright so first of all uh, if you still remember I mentioned about earlier the interface called interface tunnel 1 okay this is an interface and we should actually this interface will then should be put under DMZ okay and uh, trust zone I just mentioned yeah we can uh, specify any of our physical interface uh, as a trust zone this is for all our PC okay and then we have to configure one policy between uh, between the two guys here uh, so between the trust and the untrust zone we should permit them so this is policy number one okay trust to DMZ and we should permit now this is actually a, a packet which is a, a before encapsulate but once it goes into the tunnel it goes in the tunnel now guess what the uh, uh, the zone that we should actually configure for the tunnel so answer is actually surprisingly local <laughs> because this is the tunnel endpoint you know this is the endpoint of the tunnel or maybe you can call it a starting point it, it depends on where which direction are you looking from um, if I'm looking at the uh, firewall A point of view I want to send out this information uh, this packet which is encapsulated with the GRE uh, the IP header that we saw in the previous slide so this is actually the uh, the starting point so we actually configure local the firewall itself as the the, the source okay so this example uh, this is the uh, local zone and towards the untrust zone so we should actually create a policy wish to permit okay now this is actually uh, the configuration to be done at firewall A now when the packet reach firewall B okay with the packet okay from the the top reaches firewall B this is coming from untrust to the tunnel point the tunnel endpoint this is the, the the ending of the tunnel and again we need to also put on the local local yeah untrust zone to local zone and after that uh, after they decapsulate the packet decapsulate the packet and you become a normal ordinary packet and then this time from the DMZ uh, we actually uh, permit the packet to the trust zone okay so this is actually something that we need to uh, think twice when we, uh, we configure the uh, policy okay right so that is GRE next we look at the IPsec okay IPsec now IPsec stands for IP security protocol um, it's a protocol suit is a series of security protocol developed by the IETF Internet Engineering Task Force okay it provides a cryptology based interoperable and high quality security protection mechanism for the end-to-end -end IP packet exchange and IPsec VPN is a network layer VPN established through IPsec tunnel okay so I think um, yeah 
so you should get the point, right? So IPsec is basically uh, is um, uh, is a protocol which is designed to secure this channel here. It's, it runs over layer three, so which means the uh, the IP packet from here to here is like they they thought it's just a, a normal routing, but once it goes through a firewall, firewall look at the uh, destination, and uh, and then if this is destination matches the IPsec policy, they will send the the packet through IPsec tunnel, which is encrypted, securely encrypted, and when it reaches the firewall here, they will decrypt the packet and then send it to as a normal plain text to the uh, final destination. Okay. So let's look at the IPsec protocol framework. Now IPsec protocol framework consists of uh, two big uh, components, okay? Or may, we can call it the two big security protocol, okay? Um, the first uh, protocol here is called the authentication header. This is the, the concept, authentication header is called AH. And the other one is called the encapsulating security payload, ESP, okay? Um, so there we go, ESP, and we have we have the AH. Um, now remember, AH means authentication header. So that means uh, this this kind of IPsec configuration, uh, they actually only will perform authentication. Okay, that means if A want to send something to B, they will first perform the authentication. If uh, password is correct, then they will actually uh, send. Uh, they will they will actually send and receive each other's packet. Okay, but during the the tran the, trans the transaction, uh, the the packet is not encrypted. Why? Because AH doesn't support encryption technology. Okay, and these are some of the uh, authentication algorithm that we spoke about earlier. You remember MD5? Uh, you remember I, I spoke about the 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 waiting the wait uh, the wait kind of machine kind of thing, SHA SHH2 and the SM3, okay? So basically the difference uh, of all these algorithm are the number of bits they actually use, okay? Of course, the higher, the better, but the higher the bits, the slower the performance is, okay? Um, so for ESP, now the good thing about ESP is that they actually perform not only the encryption, and again, depend on the different uh, algorithm that we choose, the higher it means better, uh, encryption and it's, it's harder to be cracked uh, and also for authentication they also do support the following uh, mechanism okay um, and also for the key exchange okay why do we need have to, to have the key exchange um, the, they, they will first have to establish a, a protocol using the ISA KMP um, to actually perform a handshake, so to negotiate for two parties, all right? So for example, we have the firewall A, and on this side we have firewall B on this side, and maybe firewall B only supports, um, let's say, MD5 and uh, SSA for the authentication, and firewall A maybe support all of them, okay? So the, how do they know each other where, which protocol that we will negotiate, all right? So this is the reason why the first packet that they will send out is the I, I, ISA KP, KMP uh, protocol to actually negotiate for uh, what kind of uh, mechanism that we're gonna use, uh, MD5, and that guy will say, okay, we use MD5. In terms of encryption, we use a dash or maybe triple dash, and the other guy will say, okay, we I'll agree, we use the triple dash for the encryption. So this is the, uh, the, uh, the simple uh, process, okay? Right, so this is the um, yeah the IPsec SA. Um, so earlier we we spoke about the negotiation. Right, so how do they send the negotiation? So this is what we call the IPsec Security Association. Needs to be established between the IPsec peers between the two endpoints before the IPsec implements secure data transmission. Okay, I just mentioned before. Uh, SA is an agreement between the IPsec peers in the communication. Okay, I just spoke about that earlier. They need to agree uh, to the same authentication uh, mechanism and also to agree on the same uh, encryption mechanism. Okay. All right. So next, we look at the encapsulation uh, mode. Uh, basically, we have two types of encapsulation. We have transport mode encapsulation, and we also have the encapsulation in tunnel mode. All right. So let's look at the first transport mode. 
Uh, so for transport mode, in a transport mode, an AH or ESP header is added between an IP header uh, added between. Okay, this is the keyword. Is added between an IP header and the transport layer protocol header to protect the TCP, UDP, and the ICMP payload. Okay, so there we go. This is the original IP uh, header, and we have the TCP header, and then we have the data. So the AH header is then added in between the layer three and the layer four. Okay, same goes for here, and and this is called transport mode with only AH. Transport mode with only AH. So that means they will only authenticate the header, and the authentication scope is actually from here to here, from this point to this point. Okay. And they will perform a hash algorithm. So the receiver side will receive, and after that they will also perform a hash algorithm. If the value uh, are not matched, therefore the packet are not are not uh, being authenticated. All right. So um, so including the IP header now. Um, so some of the changeable fields. Okay. Now some of the IP header are not included. For example, like TTL. Okay. If the packet go through many hops. Uh, as we know, the TTL value will, will 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 gradually decrease, and then after that, uh, if you if you recalculate the IP header, uh, it will be a different value. Okay. Um, now we can also configure a uh, ESP for authentication and also for encryption, and this is the scope for the encryption. Um, so they will encrypt the TCP and also the data. So which means when somebody send this uh, packet from A to B. The original IP header can still be seen from which IP to which IP, but inside the data, which TCP uh, port that you connect to, nobody knows. Okay, you can only see the IP. Uh, and of course, the last one is the AH plus the uh, uh, ESP. Right. So this is actually uh, once we we have the ESP running on this side here. And then on top of here, we run another AH authentication. This is the most secure by far. Now, in, in what situation we use the transport mode? So typically for transport mode, uh, are use uh, are, are good for LAN scenario. All right. So for example, you have a, a we have a, a web server or maybe an, an application server. Okay. Sitting at the front, okay, and uh, application server wants to connect to the uh, database server, right? And then uh, so between these two guys, right? So we actually configure the transport mode IPsec for these two guys. Uh, it's one of the one of the many use case uh, within the land. Uh, the reason is because we we want to remain the IP header as original as possible, and they are not really suitable uh, for router scenario. So the next mode is the transport uh, tunnel mode. Sorry, uh, encapsulation in tunnel mode. Now in the tunnel mode, an AH and ESP header is added outside. Okay, this is a keyword outside. So the earlier one is between. So this one is outside. Uh, the raw IP header and also the new IP header is added. So look at this case. Raw IP header basically means this is the original. Piece of information and new header is the one that's uh, added to outside, and uh, this header is actually used uh, for the public routing. All right, so ex especially the packet wants to go through internet, so we have the uh, the public IP address of the source and the public IP address of the destination, and again AH here means they only authenticate but no encryption. Okay, and the next one is same thing ESP. Um, they will actually encrypt. Uh, the scope from here to here, raw IP header, which is your original private IP address, TCP and the data, everything will be encrypted. So nobody in between can actually look at your information about what is the private IP, where to where they're going, because all these are encrypted. And uh, and also authentication scope uh, of the ESP. Okay? And of course, the final one, we have the AH ESP, and AH will authenticate everything from here to here and then the uh, encryption here to here and then the uh, ESP authentication from here to here so this is again the most secure and also the slowest one all right so next we look at the uh, IKE SA uh, now earlier we spoke about the uh, IKE perform the function of the negotiation 
Uh, so IKESA serve as the IPsec SA by providing automatic key negotiation and establish the IPsec. All right, so this is the, the process. So IKE actually will connect to the um, uh, UDP port uh, 500, okay? Um, so, and then they will actually start exchange the IKE, uh, the packet, uh, just to negotiate for, okay, what kind of uh, AH that we're gonna use, what kind of ESP mechanism that we're going to use there. So once we agree, then they will start sending the packet and then uh, and everything will be uh, encrypted, okay? Right, so this is the uh, IPsec encryption and decryption authentication, uh, the whole process. Uh, so here we start from the IPsec uh, sender, right? So go through the ag uh, encryption algorithm and uh, here they actually use symmetric key, yeah, the same key from uh, for encrypt and also the same key for decrypt. Uh, it can be manually configured or generated by the uh, DH algorithm and then shared among each other. So they will I encrypt the IP packet and then uh, they will also authenticate the algorithm. Uh, this is authentication algorithm using HMAC for example, okay. Um, so it can be also manually configured or maybe generated by the DH algorithm and also being shared to each other. So as 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 and when we see the symmetric, you know that this is the, the two key that shared by the same key shared by both party. Okay, and then the um, they will encrypt the packet and then they will generate the uh, the hash a value and then come up with the ICV. And then this ICV will also be sent over to the sender. Now, when the sender receives the ICV, the hash value, and uh, the the the, set, the receiver will also perform a calculation on this uh, encrypted packet and to try to retrieve the ICV. And if this ICV value are the same matches, then it shows that the, the packet has not been tampered. Okay. So the, do the ICV value calculate the two end matches? If yes then they will start uh, to decrypt the packet, okay? This is still encrypted IP packet, but they have to go through the decryption engine uh, in order to decrypt, become a normal IP packet, okay? Right, so next we talk about the overview of the SSL VPN, all right? So SSL is uh, a security uh, protocol. It provides secure connection of TCP-based application layer protocol. Okay, so this kind of uh, uh, VPN only works at the TCP layer, unfortunately. Okay, uh, so there's always a good and bad, all right? Uh, especially our web, our web server. Okay, uh, so this is a, a normal uh, a web server which is no encryption, no secure. Um, HTTP traffic will then be sent to TCP header. TCP header will add the port 80 and then uh, it will add the IP header, source destination, and they will send out the packet. Nothing being encrypted. Uh, but as opposed to the uh, secure, uh, t uh, the, the data within the HTTP will then will go through the SSL engine, and then they will encrypt the data and send uh, and add on the TCP header and the IP header. And TCP header, they will add in port 443 and then send over to the uh, receiver. Um, so let's look at the uh, the Huawei. So we have two types of products uh, portfolio uh, that can perform the SSL VPN. Um, so the first product that we have is called the SVN series. This is the security access gateway. Uh, this product is actually what we call a dedicated SSL VPN product. So that means this, this appliance itself only does SSL VPN, nothing else. Uh, we also have this feature SSL VPN uh, that bundle into our USG firewall. So that means we can also activate the SSL VPN within the firewall function, a part of uh, other you know features like the uh, uh, IPS, uh, VPN, you know. So the, all these are supported. Um, so what are the uh, feature? So first of all, user authentication. Yes, we can uh, do user authentication from here. We can uh, have a local user or maybe uh, refer the user to another radius box or maybe to LDAP, etc. Uh, we can also perform file sharing. So file sharing basically means 
the um, uh, let's say this is a public internet all right so um, the uh, user from here they they connect uh, via SSL VPN back to this uh, appliance and this appliance will then connect to the backend file server and retrieve the file in plain text not encrypted format okay now this is the the whole idea so it will retrieve plain text and then after that from here to here is SSL SSL VPN okay yeah so this is the uh, the file sharing that we are referring to okay um, we also support a uh, web proxy uh, now web proxy is almost the same as the file sharing uh, the, the file sharing method basically means the the back end is basically the uh, uh, the SMB type of a file server or CIFS kind of file server okay now the web proxy here refers to the uh, back end which is okay maybe for some companies they have the uh, uh, in internal uh, application server which is running on web and this channel itself is not secure HTTP this channel is HTTP but from the appliance to you <laughs> to the user is HTTPS okay so this is the function of the uh, one of the function, one of the many function. Okay, uh, every, anything which is not secure, eventually after you pass through the VPN uh, gateway here, sorry, the SVN gateway here, and become secure. Uh, port forwarding, okay, it's just like any uh, other port forwarding functionality uh, through a secure channel, and then port forward to uh, some machine, right? So example like a uh, remote desktop example. Uh, network extension. Uh, network extension is basically just like any other uh, ordinary VPN. So the client can actually obtain private IP address, private IP address of the company, and then uh, with this network extension, you can actually access uh, into your companies as if this is a just another VPN uh, protocol. Okay. Uh, 